This is Esther of Estekman. We are here to serve all of you. Hello, Asta. Welcome in our space today. Hello. We would like to ask you a few questions about yes. Athena. Would yes. you like to talk to us about her? What is your relationship? What is her role in the Asta Command? She is not in this ship. She is in my fellow Venusian my original physical incarnation was in the planet Venus. All of you still can see the planet and planet does exist. However, our civilization has shifted. So, you don't find us in the planet anymore. We don't go deep into the history, but we have shifted our locations. This is a part of the reason I reside in the ship and I carry on my work from the ship. So she is my home. Athena, she is what she has shifted herself into more of almost no physical. But when she, if she wants to appear herself in physical form in order to have a contact in the physical societies, she can. So she took more of the role of an ascended masters. That was her decision to support the others and serve others. Why do you say it was a hard decision? because each individual can decide how to serve others. So there are so many ways to serve others. You can serve others, stay somewhat physical like myself, even though frequency is higher. I'm in 11th dimension, but I can still communicate and exist with the people in 5D, 60, 70, 80 beings. This is why my crew members can be there with me. So I created this form in this way. So instead of become 11D, non-physical beings, which is more traditional way, because after 9D, most of the beings choose to be non-physical and becomes a collective. Athena took very similar decision, but instead of stay in the ship, she decided to be more of existing as an ascended master. So she can form an individual relationships with people like you or others. Similar to Sananda is doing. Does it make sense? Yes, totally. Uh, what else could you tell us about her? About her mission now or past? What do you mean? Whatever you would like to, to share with us uh, regarding Athena. You need to be more specific. Okay, so 
let's uh, let me ask you first from in the past so how has her role changed what was her role before she chose chooses to become an ascended master she was part of the earth experiment um, group so she descended to earth in the past and she was sharing her knowledge to the people on earth this is why in greek mythology they have information about her all the goddess and the gods in the mythologies they are not god mm. but people on earth had limited knowledge and a limited way to put these galactic beings in the box and a box which makes sense to them was God. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, so when she was on Earth, did she incarnate fully into a human body? Did she go no. through a, a human life? No. It was similar to how Erica existed on Earth in the beginning of the incarnation. We could come to Earth as the uh, team of creators without incarnating into Earth body. So we can keep our physical existence we can keep our consciousness and we can just interact with them as who we are. So she was uh, visiting as a, as a light being? Yes. She, was she projecting any kind of semi-physical body? Were other people able to see, human beings were able to, to see her? In, yes, in back then she, Earth was 5D, so mm. she has to bring herself down to 5D level of, or closer to 5D to able to form herself very solid manner. Mm. But even if she's in semi-physical, to other people 5D, they can still see her because it's physical. It's not non-physical. Yeah. Like I myself are semi-physical, but people could eyewitness me because I'm still semi-physical. Yeah, yeah. And how long did she stay on Earth in that mission? It was about 364 years. Mm -hmm. It's not that long mission. Yeah. So in Greek mythology, there is a lot of, um, there are a lot of stories um, how these quote-unquote gods were intermingling and and um, with each other and um, create offsprings uh, was that accurate was did she no. really have it was more of how there are so many prototypes of humans so certain groups we're going to use erica's group they used a pleiadian as a main physical prototypes uh, to use Pleiadian body structure as an encasing and also using other DNA of other galactic groups which is compatible with Pleiadian DNAs and created prototype one which is the Lemurians along with um, the original original living so that DNA which is from earth and the Pleiadian DNA and others are mixed so it's not technically the beings are exchanging their DNA in the way you do on this earth this was more of using technologies 
and uh, creating a new prototype. Of course, um, mating with original Earth or more of prototypes and the prototypes happen. And some of the uh, galactic beings, which is more of 4D beings, they chose to mate with prototypes here and there. But sometimes they found out they are not incompatible. Because let's say if a Reptarians wants to mate, or Draconians want to mate with prototype one, it's very difficult for them to create a baby. So this is why in a big scale of the point of view, the councils didn't object these intruders to create their own prototypes on their own without any permissions. We thought this is a good idea because earth beings means two earth prototypes can mate with each other and they create combination of a prototype which has more of Lipterian or draconian oriented and then Pleiadian oriented. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So they created this mythology to explain what it is going on, but they don't have the idealistic knowledge about what it is going on. So they just put it as the way they can understand. So all mythology is not 100% accurate, but there is a shed of truth in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for sharing all this. So then, um, did she ever come come back to Earth? No. In a similar way? No, that no. was the only time she visited. Because that was the mission uh, she chose to conduct. And once mission is over, means <coughs> when all teachings and then all creation is done, there's no way or no reason to stay. Unless a being chose to stay and it's decided to incarnate for whatever the reason. Once the project is done, you move on. And you said that then she, she had been living with you in, in Venus. Could you talk to us about that period? Yes. We are together as a team. And we have been serving others as a team. But back then, we are more of more dense, more solid beings. So we are sort of like working in the uh, company and doing project together if we put in your human term like working in a way like a co-worker even though we are together that's how we are handling our work that's before all of us made a decision to shift into other before the Venus was a paradise. And how is Venus right now? I mean, I understand that there exists there in many dimensions, um, but what could you say about its current <laughs> um, situation? Some of the people still wants to bring back the original form or improve the version of the original society there. But since we have left 
our planet because uh, that planet is no longer energetically aligned with us. It was too dense for us. So we decided to explore other way of existing and then we did it out of necessity. However, because of that, now we are understanding this is more suitable to conduct our mission. Okay, I want to ask you about the, the Pleiadian Arcturian mothership called Athena. Is it related in any way to, to the entity we are discussing? They are always the part of soul fractals exist in every planet. So, so oh, I'm sorry, please go ahead. So, the fractals of Athena's soul exist as Arcturians or Pleiadians, but that is not exactly her. Like I use Erica as an example, she does have her original body in my ship. In other timelines, she is still there but she exists here now as Erica. Is this the same person? No, it, not exactly. She is um, start to expanding herself and remembering who she really is and knowing who she really is. But all these um, histories and how she looks and everything is not exactly the same. So it's a different person with same soul fractals and why was it named und, um, under her name what's her, the, the, her relationship to this mothership easiest way to explain to all of you is this is more of advertisement <laughs> what do you mean? When, when we are on the ship, we don't have to name the ship. We know which, which one is ours because of the frequency. Mm -hmm. And all of us are, in a way, um, going, getting and get out because of the frequencies. Some of the ships are not as physical as the other. So this is more of advertisement for you you guys they don't have to put the name like a flashy name like Athena as a name of the ship it's not necessary so it's a man-made name you mean yes I see okay yeah makes sense <laughs> but is it related to it in some way she does have a soul fractals so in that case yes but no mm. It's not she's commander of the ship. Okay. And um, and now you said she exists as what we call ascended master. Yes. Or uh, you can call her as a goddess. Mm -hmm. The same way. Yeah, yeah. Does she, when she um, appears to people, some, some entities choose a certain avatar. Does, is that something that she has that you could describe? She hasn't changed. She didn't choose to exist in other physical appearance. She, she still has her original forms, but much higher frequencies. So for the ones who don't know her perhaps, because I'm sure there are some people who are listening who have never heard of her. How, the, how could you dis, um, describe how she would look like, how she would appear? She has a typical humanoid prototype as majority of people who do share these characteristics. We're talking about in the galaxy. So she does have similar looks as Pleiadians. 
for tyrants like Erika's planet people. They no longer exist, but they have a Caucasian look. They have blue eyes. They have blonde hair. And they look like a model. How we choose to describe the physical appearance. Mm -hmm. They are tall and thin. Beautiful. She does have a wavy, soft, wavy blonde hair. Beautiful. Goes to her waist. Mm. She, I would say, we all look angelic. Mm. Yeah, yeah. According to your eyes. Yeah. And uh, why? would one want to connect with her what are her um the 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 the, the values that the gifts the what is what are her the things that she's good at and sees or she's she likes sharing with people her mission is to increase divine feminine energies there are so many ways to increase these energies but this energy of frequency is very important in order to create peace and harmony in every single planet. So now Earth is, or us has been, operating with masculine energy, which is not nothing wrong with that. But when one energy is dominating more than the other energy, there is no balance. So her job is to reunite soft feminine energy within humans so many of you especially females on your planet are into beauties so she is known as a goddess of beauty from the greek era so she's in a way operating from that route so anyone who wants to improve, improve their beauty, inner and outer beauty, and anyone who wants to create a beautiful love life, that's where she starts to contact with others or transmitting her light cordon to the person who wants to receive such improvement. So she chose to exist as a more of God as well as the masters, so she can conduct this work in multiple dimensions. Sort of the way how Sananda is teaching Christ consciousness in the multiple dimensions and the multiple planets, the same way. Yeah. And if someone would like to connect with her, contact her, how can they do that? It is very simple. When you want to call in or contact with any being, you can simply call the name and ask for the help. That's how you contact. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we can still hear you, your thought, your wish. So we are more than happy to serve you if that is aligned with your soul contact and soul purpose. Is there anything else you would like to share with us regarding her? It's something perhaps I didn't ask you, something that is important. That it's very think. important um, to increase more of the awareness of self-love. This is something she is extremely putting her heavy emphasis on. 
Of course, she always enter your consciousness through beauty or love. But what she wants to spread the more, especially on in this planet, is self love. Because from self love, you can create peace and harmony. From self love, you can awaken your Christ consciousness. And from self love, you can more move forward yourself to the fifth dimension. This is Aster of Aster Command.